Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to talk about the, curv the curvature of the universe. And some of you may have already studied a little bit of that and you say, well, there's nothing much to it. Either the universe is an open universe or a closed universe or a flat universe, depending upon the density of the universe. And so what we do know, what we do understand, is that there is what we call a density parameter, a number that's calculated based upon the density of all the matter and the energy in the universe. And when we do that, we know that the density parameter, if it's calculated to be greater than one, we have a closed universe. The universe looks like a sphere, so you can kind of set off in one direction, if you could just travel one direction, because the curvature of the universe would be such that you probably end up in the same place as you started with. Kind of like an ant walking across the earth. If the ant just kept on walking and kept on walking, if there weren't any oceans, and kept on walking, eventually the curvature of the earth is such that the ant would eventually get back to the very same place as it started. And that's kind of the way we think of a closed universe. A flat universe would be where the density parameter is equal to 1, so that it doesn't curve outward, it doesn't curve inward, so you keep on walking, keep on walking, you just keep on walking in a straight line outward and never get back to where you started, always moving away from the position where you started from. And then an open universe would be where the density parameter is less than 1, so there's not as, not as much matter in there as you would need for a flat or a closed universe, and therefore the universe would kind of curve outward. Now again, you say, well, if it curves outward, it doesn't go back to where it started. And no, this is a four-dimensional curve, so the universe would just kind of curve away from itself, and it would be kind of like a hyperbolic uh, curve, where you'd never get back to where you started, always moving further and further apart from the straight direction that you set out to be. A way to kind of measure that, if you, for example, could have two laser beams that could go infinitely far in the universe, and you shine them side by side, perfectly parallel to each other, in a closed universe, eventually the two laser beams would end, end up coming together in the same location. They would simply curve or follow the curved universe and they would then meet somewhere in the far distant uh, distance of the universe. If the universe was flat, the two laser beams would simply keep going and keep the same distance between them no matter how far you would travel along those laser beams. They would never go farther apart, never come closer together. That's what we mean by a flat universe. And finally, two laser beams in an open universe would slowly begin to diverge from one another and never come back together, don't stay parallel, just keep on moving away from each other like that. So, how do we know what kind of universe we live in? Do we live in a closed universe, a flat universe, or an open universe? Well, before we think about that, what would be the ramifications? Well, the idea always has been if the density parameter of the universe was greater than one, there would be so much matter in the universe that eventually the universe expansion would slow down and stop, and the universe would then come back together again into a, what we would call a big crunch. The final fate of the universe in a closed universe probably would be that the expansion would stop and that the whole universe would come back together into this enormous crunch. And the idea always was floated around, well, maybe it's been doing that forever, and the universe keeps on expanding, Everything exists the way it does, and it keeps on collapsing and starts over again, maybe in an infinite cycle like that. But in the cycle we are in today, even if there's only one cycle, the expectation is if the universe is closed, the universe would eventually slow down, stop, and fall back together because there's so much matter in the universe that gravity would actually slow down the expansion and get the universe to collapse back together again. In a flat universe, it's kind of like leaving the Earth in a rocket that's moving at the escape velocity. It would slow down, it would slow down, it would slow down, slow down, slow down, but never quite come to a stop and fall back to the Earth. It would always keep moving away farther and farther and farther from the Earth, even though the speed may be slower, it would never ever stop at a flat universe until it reaches out at infinity. So in a flat universe, the expansion would continue basically forever, never stop, never slow down, and never, well, never slow down to the point where it would stop and fall back together again. And in an open universe, the concept would be that the expansion would just continue to accelerate. There's not enough matter for the expansion to slow down, and the universe would just kind of be on a fast forward track away from itself and just expand and never, never stop expanding and always go, go out further and further. So the question is, what is the density of the universe and how does that compare to the density parameter? And so the equation of the density parameter is the density that's measured in the universe divided by the critical density. What density does the universe need to be for it to be 
uh, that if the density of the universe is greater than that, the universe would be a closed universe, and if it's less than that, the universe would be an open universe. What is that critical density? What is that density to which you want to compare the measurements to? And it turns out the critical density was found to be equal to this equation right here, an interesting equation, three times the Hubble constant, which is now about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, uh, the Hubble constant squared, divided by 8 pi g. And you know what? I'm going to do a quick check on that. Yep, that's what I got, because uh, I don't remember it offhand. But anyway, when we plug in the correct values here, the end result is that the density, the critical density of the universe, is 1 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms per cubic meter. So the question is, is the density greater than that, equal to that, or less than that? So we've done some calculations. If we take into account all the visible matter of the universe and we know how big the universe is, we could then say that the density of the universe is equal to this. Well, that is far less than the critical density, and so therefore, knowing it's only about 4.2% of the critical density, by, by far the matter in the universe, all the atoms, all the hydrogen and helium, all the stars, all the planets, all the comets, all the, all the galaxies put together do not add up to enough mass to give the universe a critical density. But then we discovered not only is there visible matter, there's also invisible matter, something we call the dark matter. Matter of fact, the dark matter was probably one of the prime, if not the prime constituent of the reason why the universe coalesced in, co into stars and galaxies. Without the extra gravitational force due to dark matter, stars and galaxies may have never formed. So there's this matter, something that we know is there because we see the gravitational effect, that seems to make up a large percentage of the total mass of the universe. It turns out that if we include the dark matter, the universe now has a critical density of tw or a density of 24% of the critical density. So you can see here that the dark matter is about 5 sixths the total mass when compared to the visible matter. The visible matter is only about 1 sixth of the total mass of the universe. But yet together, the visible matter and the dark matter together only make up 24% of the critical, mass, or the critical density. And so therefore, you would say, well, it's definitely far less than one, so we must be living in an open universe. But that's not entirely true, because we tried to figure out another way of measuring the density of the universe. And the way to do that is to go take a look at the early pictures of the universe, which is the measurement of the cosmic background radiation. And when we look at the cosmic background radiation, we see fluctuations, density and temperature fluctuations within the radiation. And we measure the angle, the angular size of those, those uh, density fluctuations, the temperature fluctuations, and we figured by doing some nice calculations that the angular size should be about one degree. Now, if we now actually go measure the angular size, and the angular size is bigger than one degree, then we know that the universe curses outward, and we can see that the universe is actually appears bigger than it really is. And if the angular size measured is smaller than one degree, then we know that the universe must curve together like this, and therefore the critical density <coughs> is therefore um, uh, uh, greater than one. So you can see that by doing a, a separate experiment, by measuring the size of the angular, uh, by measuring the angular size of the density fluctuations, the temperature fluctuations, the early radiation, we can actually double check to see if the equation uh, that we got here for the critical density, and when we involve the visible matter and the dark matter, matches up our experimental uh, results when we take a look at the early universe and the radiation thereof. And it turns out they didn't match up. When we started measuring the angular size, they were almost exactly one degree. Which means that there's no change in the direction of the light coming from those regions, which means that two beams moving parallel to the universe will stay pretty well side by side parallel, which means that the critical density of the universe is actually very close to the actual density because the what we call the density parameter is actually very close to one. Now that's a big mystery. Why is the density of the universe close to the critical density? Why is the, oop, this is the wrong thing, this should be the density parameter here. Why is the density parameter so close to one? Well, there is a missing component. That means that all the visible matter plus all the dark matter plus some unknown component together makes up enough density in the universe to give the density 
uh, of the universe, a number about 1 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms, which is, by the way, equal to the critical density. What is that missing component? Well, we don't know what it is, so we know that energy contributes to the missing component as well. Now, the background radiation energy has now stretched to the point where each wavelength is about a millimeter, and so it doesn't carry a lot of energy anymore, so therefore the background radiation only adds a very tiny minute amount, like one-tenth of one percent to the total density of the universe. We know that's not it. So there must be some other energy in the universe that causes the universe to expand and that causes the density uh, of the universe to be about equal to the critical density. Don't know what it is, so we gave it a name. We called it dark energy. And from our calculations, we can see that the dark energy must make up about three quarters of the total density of the entire universe. So there's some mystery energy out there which we believe is responsible for driving the universe outward, for pushing the universe outward. Uh, but also, it causes the critical density, uh, I mean the density of the universe, to be very close to the critical density of the universe, which means that the density parameter is pretty close to 1, which means that the expansion of the universe is going to be fairly uniform. There's a very fine balance between the gravitational forces pulling the universe back in and whatever forces there are pushing the universe back out. There's that very fine balance. And if it wasn't for that fine balance, the universe long ago would have crunched back together or would have flown apart and much, much more violently, much faster than it does today. But the fact is that the, 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 that the density parameter universe is so close to one that it's almost beyond belief perfect for the universe to be the way it is today. The universe is here very gently expanding, although at a faster rate uh, than at the beginning of the universe, but very close to that constant rate outward in such a way that the universe can exist the way it does today. And instead of, if the, if the density parameter had been very different, if there was no such thing as dark energy, then the density parameter would have been such that the universe may have blown apart much faster and we would not have had a universe the way we have today with stars and galaxies because the universe might have expanded so fast that gravity could not have in time pulled stars and galaxies together for our universe to be the way it is today. So, there's something strange going on in the universe, first of all, the visible matter only makes up about 4% of the total density of the universe. The rest is made up of dark matter and dark energy, and we really don't know yet what those things are. But we do know that without them, we wouldn't have a universe the way it looks today. So that's another great mystery about the formation of the universe.